I think the first thing that service providers need to be aware of is to come to the work with an understanding that parents who are struggling with substance use issues, that pregnant women who are struggling with substance use issues are not intending to harm anyone. The next thing that we that I think we need to do as service providers in all fields is come with an understanding that our role is to support, not to make demands. So to ask questions when someone reaches out for help about the kind of support that they need right now. You know, what's brought you here today? What can I do to help you today? What are your priorities? Where would you like to get to in the future? What are the things that, that are troubling you most right now? And how can I help you to get to the next place? Rather than, rather than being prescriptive, right? Well, you've got to stop drinking right now. You've got to deal with this. You've got to do this. You've got to go to treatment. You've, you know, um, that, that drives people away we're learning that particularly for women that there's a very strong connection between past and current experiences of trauma and substance use. We know that women who have trauma histories or who have dealt with very challenging life circumstances sometimes use, in fact often use, drugs or alcohol to cope with those challenges as a way of self-medicating, as a way to numb out, um, or for a myriad of other reasons. We know that women who have substance use problems are also at very high risk for unintended pregnancies, and those pregnancies will then become substance exposed pregnancies. Now unfortunately, what we do in many communities around the country is that when we become aware that a woman has been drinking or using drugs while she's pregnant, almost um, almost as soon as this information is revealed, child welfare authorities are contacted. And, what, and quite often when child welfare becomes involved, there can be an assumption made that because a woman is using drugs or alcohol, she's not fit to parent. We know that this is in fact not true. We're also learning that if we can support that woman who's dealing with the substance use problem during her pregnancy and in the postpartum period, support her in ways to address those root causes that are underlying her substance use, that often these women can and do become great moms and, you know, and through that work of parenting their child are able to put their lives together in different ways that allow them to become healthier and stronger women and members of their communities. So, so we're trying at all parts of this cycle to think about how we incorporate FASD prevention into that work. Often parents will be left out of the process of working through a diagnosis or thinking about um, ways to better support their child. So when we, when we step away from that and we see parents as partners through this process and as the people who are in the best position to help their children with support, um, we can we create outcomes for the for the child and for the parents and for the family as a whole that are that are much better if we can strengthen that family unit by addressing social determinants of health by dr addressing some of the some of the root causes that may be underlying some of the struggles going on in the family maybe it's issues around housing maybe it's issues around poverty or food security maybe it's a need for it's it's a need for parenting education we're seeing in my community for example that in uh, some of our programs that serve high risk pregnant women and mothers with substance use issues, two thirds of those women have been in care themselves growing up. And so they haven't often had the opportunity to learn um, through observation or through their own experience uh, about what long term, safe, healthy, stable family lives look like or to be mentored themselves as mothers. FASD is, you know, many of us say, is the tip of the iceberg, right? When you, when, when you're in a place where you're seeing a lot of FASD, it's because a lot of other things are going wrong. So it would be delightful to, to be in a day where we're not seeing FASD, not just because we don't see the tip of the iceberg anymore, but because maybe the iceberg has melted. Maybe we've been able to deal with some of those underlying causes um, 
for FASD that, um, that affect everybody, not just people who are dealing with substance use or dealing with a disability. So I think that's the thing, when we see FASD, it's, it's often a symptom of all of these other things that have gone wrong, right? It's, um, and when we're wanting to address those factors that need to be addressed in order to prevent FASD, we know it's not just about telling pregnant women not to drink. Um, we have to be asking the questions about why pregnant women are drinking and what the impact of that drink is on, on that woman given the circumstances in which she's found herself. So I mean, that's, that's one of the interesting things about FASD, right, is that um, it's, it's a condition that's about so many other conditions that if we're not seeing it, it's generally because we're seeing a much healthier community.